All right, so are you ready to dive into Kamala Harris's CNN town hall? Absolutely. I sent over the transcript, and wow, there's some pretty wild stuff in here. Yeah, there was no shortage of topics, that's for sure. I mean, from Trump's leadership style to the economy, even the conflict between Israel and Hamas. She really covered it all. Well, let's start with what everyone's been talking about, Harris's comments about John Kelly. Oh, yeah, Trump's former White House chief of staff. Right, you know, the one where he basically called Trump an authoritarian... Uh, maybe even fascist. Yeah, even claimed that he praised Hitler. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> intense. And Harris called Kelly's comments a 911 call. Right, framing them as this, like, urgent warning about Trump. Yeah, like a red alert about his leadership. But but is that a smart move? It's definitely bold, right? Mm -hmm. Like trying to use these insider accounts yeah. to sway voters who are maybe still on the fence about Trump. Exactly. It's like she's saying, look, even Trump, our own people are worried about him. Right. Using Kelly's closeness to Trump to give those accusations more weight. But is it a gamble? I mean, what if voters just see Kelly as like a disgruntled ex-employee? Ooh, that's a good point. It could backfire. Yeah, it makes you wonder if that kind of strategy has actually worked in the past. Right, have we seen these insider accounts actually change anyone's minds? Or is it just more political noise? It's tough to say for sure because each situation is so unique. Right. And voters are complex, but one thing's for sure, Trump's camp is not staying silent on this. Oh, definitely not. They fired back pretty quickly, calling Harris's statements outright lies. Yeah, so it's a classic political showdown, right? Totally. He said, she said, and everyone's choosing sides. Exactly. But this town hall wasn't all about attacking Trump, right? I mean, Harris also addressed the economy and inflation, which a lot of voters are worried about. Right, because it's not enough to just point fingers. Nope. Voters want solutions, especially when it comes to things like the price of groceries. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. Did she actually offer any solutions or was it more about just highlighting the problems? Yeah. Well, she definitely acknowledged that people are struggling, you know, talking about families having a hard time making ends meet. Right. And she pointed to Trump's past economic policies, suggesting that they made things worse. OK. But did she lay out a plan for what she would do differently? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. She talked about the need for smart economic policies and investments, but it wasn't very detailed. So maybe a missed opportunity. I mean, if voters are looking for specifics. Maybe, but remember, it's a town hall, right? It's about connecting with voters and answering their questions directly. Right. Maybe she's saving the detailed stuff for later in the campaign. That makes sense. She was also asked about the Israel-Hamas conflict. Ooh, yeah. A really tough issue. Really complex. Yeah. So how'd she handle that? Well, she had to be very careful. You know, right. acknowledging the loss of life, especially in Gaza, but also trying to stay consistent with the Biden administration's stance. Do you think that worked? Did it resonate with the people in the audience? It's hard to tell just from the transcript, but I think some voters might have been looking for a stronger condemnation of the violence yeah. or maybe a clearer plan for how she would approach things. It's a tough one to address for sure, especially when you're trying to appeal to voters who might have very different opinions on the issue. Exactly. It's a reminder that foreign policy is often this like balancing act. Yeah, with no easy answers. Right. OK, so we've talked about a lot of different topics, but it seems like Harris kept coming back to Trump. Yeah, it's like she's trying to frame the whole election as a choice between two very different visions for America. Right, her versus him. Exactly. And she really emphasized this contrast between her focus on solutions and what she characterized as Trump's obsession with revenge and loyalty. It's a pretty powerful message, right? It, it, it plays into this whole idea that's been building for years that Trump is unfit for office. Right, that he puts his personal grudges ahead of the country. So do you think voters will buy it? Will they see the election as this battle between stability and chaos? Well, it depends. It'll definitely resonate with voters who are already worried about the direction of the country. The ones who want things to go back to normal. Right. But for undecided voters, it could backfire. How so? Some might see it as too negative, too focused on attacking Trump instead of offering a positive vision. Oh, I see what you mean. And let's not forget, Trump and his supporters are pushing back hard against these narratives. Right. They're calling it a smear campaign. Exactly. They're saying it's all politically motivated and trying to scare voters into choosing Harris. So it's a classic case of dueling narrative. Right. Each yeah. side trying to control the story and convince voters that their version of reality is the truth. Like a battle for hearts and minds. Exactly. And the outcome of this election is still very much up in the air. This is already so fascinating, mm. but we're just getting started. I know, right? When we come back, 
We'll dive even deeper into John Kelly's statements and how these dueling narratives might actually affect the election. Stay with us. <laughs> it's like she's trying to use these insider accounts, you know, like John Kelly. Yeah. Like a political weapon. It is a uh, an interesting strategy. It's like saying, see, even Trump's own people are worried, <laughs> but will it work? Yeah. Will voters buy it? Will they mm -hmm. see John Kelly as a credible source or just, you know... A disgruntled employee with an axe to grind. Exactly. That's the question, isn't it? How much weight do voters give to these kinds of accounts? Probably depends on the voter, right? Yeah. Their views on Trump already and how they see the person making these accusations. Yeah, it's all very subjective. So it's a risky move, right? Oh, for sure. Because it could backfire if voters just dismiss Kelly as someone who's bitter about his time in the White House. Right. And I bet you Trump and his supporters are already pushing that narrative. Yeah. That these accusations are nothing more than a smear campaign, you know? A political hit job. Exactly. And they want to make voters question the motives of anyone making these accusations. So it's like classic, he said, she said, right. <laughs> it really is with both sides, you know, having completely different interpretations of what happened. It's almost like we're in this era of dueling narratives. Yeah. And it's up to the voters to decide what they believe. It's true. It's a real battle for... Hearts and minds. Yeah. And which narrative is more convincing, right? <laughs> which story do they find more believable? Well, speaking of narratives, yeah. Harris is trying to push this idea that she's the candidate of solutions, while Trump is all about chaos and retribution. Right. Framing herself as the stable one. Yeah. But do you think that'll work? Will that message resonate with voters? Well, I think it's a message that's crafted to appeal to a certain type of voter. Okay. The ones who are tired of the drama, the ones who are craving like a return to normalcy. Makes sense. You know, stability and all that. But it feels like it could also be risky. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some voters might see it as too negative. Yeah. Too focused on attacking Trump and not enough on like a positive vision. Yeah, you're right. It is a balancing act. And to be successful, she has to do more than just criticize Trump. Yeah. She has to show voters that she actually has solutions, you know, to the problems. So she needs to go beyond just talking about solutions. Yeah. And actually have a plan. Yeah, like a roadmap for what she would do. Exactly. She has to show that she gets it, you know, yeah. that she understands the challenges and that she has some real ideas about how to fix them. And she has to do it in a way that feels authentic. Oh, absolutely. Right. Like voters need to feel like she gets them. And that she's actually fighting for them. It can't just be about policy. Yeah. It has to be about making that personal connection with voters. It makes me think back to that moment in the town hall where she was asked about the rising cost of groceries. Oh, yeah. Which is something that affects so many people. A very relatable issue. It was a chance for her to show that she understands you know, the struggles people are going through. Yeah, and to offer some reassurance. But did she do enough? Did she convince voters that she has a plan to actually do something about inflation? No. That's what undecided voters are thinking about, I bet. Right, because it's one thing to criticize the other guy. Yeah. It's another to say, hey, I have the answer. It's a high bar, you know, in this climate. Where nobody trusts politicians. Right, exactly. And it's not just the economy, right? No. I mean, voters want leadership on all sorts of things. Oh, yeah. Health care, climate change, foreign policy. And she needs a vision. Right. Oh, she does. For all of those things. And she has to convince voters that she's got the experience to actually make it happen. So what about the Israel-Hamas conflict? How do you think she handled those questions? That seems like a really tricky situation. It was. She had to be so careful there. Right. On one hand, she needed to acknowledge the, you know, terrible loss of life. Especially in Gaza. Right, and show empathy for the victims. But she couldn't stray too far from what the Biden administration is already doing right. Exactly. She and had to stay somewhat consistent. It's a challenge when you're the VP and running for president. It is. You're trying to be your own person, but you're also tied to the current administration. It's like walking a tightrope. It really is. Trying to appeal to voters who want change, but also reassuring them that some things will stay the same. Yeah, a delicate balance. It'll be interesting to see how she handles that going forward. Definitely. feels like everything she does, every word is being analyzed. Oh, yeah. Like, what does this tell us about the kind of president she'll be? It's the nature of the game. Especially now when everything is so polarized. Right. It's crazy. What do you think stood out to you most from this town hall? Hmm. You know what really struck me was the power of narratives. Yeah. 
both Harris and Trump are telling these really compelling stories yeah. about themselves and about each other. It's like they're creating their own realities. And voters have to choose which one they believe. And how they tell those stories could really determine the outcome of the election. It could, yeah. It's this fascinating battle of ideas and personalities. It'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. It, will, it reminds me that, you know, politics isn't just about policy. It's about storytelling. Yeah. It's about persuasion and connecting with voters on an emotional level. And in a close election, those emotional connections could be what makes the difference. They really could. We still have a lot more to unpack from this town hall, though. We do. So when we come back, we'll look at the bigger picture of what this all means, you know, for the future of our democracy. Sounds good. I feel like we're in this weird place, you know, where like personal stories yeah, and insider accounts are like everything. Yeah. Like they really shape what people think. It's true. It's like everyone wants that inside scoop. Right. That behind the scenes look. Yeah. It's like, give me the receipts. Show me you were there. Exactly. They want to hear it from someone who is in the room. Right. But then it's like, how do we know if those stories are actually true? Right. How do we know what to believe? Because are they coming from a good place or is there like a secret agenda? Right. Are they trying to help or hurt? Yeah. And we have to be so careful about what we believe these days. Oh, absolutely. Especially with all the fake news and deep fakes and everything. Yeah. You can't just trust everything you hear. Right. Even if it seems like it's coming from someone credible. It's true. You got to think critically about it. Yeah. You know, look at the source. Try to understand, like, why they're saying it. Yeah. And what their biases might be. Because it's so easy to just believe what we want to believe. Right. You know, it already fits into our worldview. Confirmation bias, it's a powerful thing. It is. So as we get closer to this election, yeah, I think it's more important than ever to really think for ourselves. Yeah. And be open to hearing different perspectives. Absolutely, because this election is about way more than just picking a president. It it's, is. it's about, like, the future of the country, you know, mm -hmm. what we value, what kind of leadership we want, how we interact with the rest of the world. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a huge responsibility. And we're all part of it. We are. And I think this deep dive into the town hall, you know, yeah. it's given us a lot to think about. It has. We've looked at the big issues, you know, the stories everyone's telling and like the challenges we face as voters. Trying to figure it all out. Right. And we talked about Harris's strategy, how she's trying to connect with people and how Trump and his supporters are pushing back. But in the end, it comes down to each voter Yeah. to decide, you know, who they believe in. Who they trust. Yeah. And who they think should lead the country. It all comes down to those individual choices. Yeah. Informed by what we read and watch and the stories we choose to believe in. And what we care about most. Right. So as we wrap up, here's something to think about. How do you cut through all the noise? Yeah. And make good decisions, you know, when it feels like everyone's yelling their version of the truth. It's a tough question, but it's one we all need to be asking ourselves. Absolutely. Thanks for diving deep with us today. This was great. Remember, stay curious, stay informed, yeah. and stay engaged because our democracy depends on it. Whoop.